After eight years in the White House, Bill Clinton leaves office next week. His presidency forever marred, in part because of what Linda Tripp revealed. Tonight, reporter Nancy Collins brings us an exclusive interview with Linda Tripp. The change in her appearance is dramatic, and so is her story. As you will see, Linda Tripp is highly opinionated, but she says it's important for her, finally, to tell her side of the scandal, and it may or may not change your mind about Linda Tripp herself. This is Linda Tripp today, but this is probably not how you remember her. This is such important information. The country's most infamous secretary has shed more than 30 pounds and has a brand new look, courtesy of cosmetic surgery and paid for by a supporter. I didn't realize how ugly I was till I saw the pictures after this story hit. I was horrified as well as, as the rest of the nation, really. I understand that there's been a great deal of speculation about just who I am and how I got here. Well, the answer is simple. I'm you. I'm just like you. Do you think your physical appearance affected the way the public viewed you? Yes. It was easier for the country to accept um, evil, manipulative, betray, villainous, um, ominous, odious, all those horrible words, if the photos match the description. But getting the face she wanted took not one, but two surgeries. Well, the first one uh, was a complete disaster. Um, severe complications, pain. In any event, months later, I found a remarkable doctor and uh, went through several hours of corrective surgery, not um, new surgery so much as literally corrective. Has it given you more confidence? No, I don't think, I think once your confidence is eroded or undermined, I don't know that plastic surgery is um, a way to, to, to give it back. Today, Linda Tripp lives alone in a rented cottage on this Virginia horse farm, where she spends time with her two children, now out on their own. Though it's been two years since Tripp's secret tapes through the country into pandemonium, she knows many will forever see her as a modern-day Judas. Despite that, Tripp is still outspoken about all she saw inside the Clinton White House. Do you think that Monica Lewinsky was the president's only uh, dalliance while he was in the White House? No. This was not a man who uh, discriminated in any big way. He was an equal opportunity philanderer. Tripp may have an axe to grind when it comes to the president. The right wing has certainly embraced her, though she says she's a registered independent. Linda Tripp first arrived in the White House in 1990 as a career secretary in the Bush administration. You know how children sometimes grow up and want to be Miss America, or um, that clearly wasn't a choice. But... Um, <laughs> Just have a dream. To me, the White House was the dream. I would have cleaned toilets with my tongue <laughs> to work in the White House. When the Clintons arrived, Tripp was asked to stay on in the West Wing, where she worked directly with the president and his senior staff. Initially, she found the president appealing, was happy to be part of his team. He was um, charismatic, highly energetic. He was warm. Um, he, he has an aura of... Um, uniqueness that I've not met in anyone else. What about the first time you met Hillary Clinton? I remember thinking how completely impressive she was. So completely polished uh, in her presentation. Um, she's the consummate politician. What was the Clinton's relationship like? I, I barely saw them being civil. I saw um, almost a mother figure to his recalcitrant sort of schoolboy youngster. Um, who was always sort of looking over his shoulder to make sure he hadn't misbehaved or hadn't been caught. Do you think the president was a little afraid of Hillary? I think he wanted to avoid conflict. But it wasn't just the Clinton's relationship that bothered Tripp. It was witnessing, she says, an array of scandals that began happening almost immediately. It was 1993, the year of the Whitewater investigation, Travelgate, not to mention Vince Foster's suicide and Kathleen Willey's encounter with the president that she would later call sexual harassment. Some people see you as a scandal monger. Remember that I didn't create the scandals. They kept promoting me and they kept giving me increasingly sensitive positions. So um, I was essentially where every scandal was born. Well, you know one of the raps on you, one of the, one of the what your critics say that you... Gossip. Gossip. Busybody. Yeah. 
they had to neutralize me, didn't they? I mean, because Monica Lewinsky was the least of their concerns. Do you think that Hillary knew about Monica all along? There's not a thing that Mrs. Clinton misses in the White House. I don't think that she knew while it, every time that Monica was in the study on her knees, no. Um, but there came a point in time when she was made aware and, and then Monica was moved. Moved to the Pentagon, where Linda Tripp had been transferred in 1994. Lewinsky was the confidential assistant to Linda's boss. I had very little to do with her. She was a pest. She'd show up at my desk. She'd want a picture of Clinton. I knew she was a groupie, and I knew she was someone's pet rock. You don't get that kind of job without being someone's pet rock at 22. But you never thought the president? No. He generally doesn't go for them that young. Describe Monica Lewinsky for me. Oh, she's a bright girl. I think she's a beautiful girl. Um, she has a lot, a lot to offer. Um, I don't hate her in any way. I am so, so disappointed at her choices all along. Tell me about the day she told you about her affair with the president. She essentially accosted me coming into the Pentagon and pulled me into the cafeteria and blurted it out. She said, I've been involved in an affair for a long time. I had to leave the White House. Um, until after the election, it was too dangerous for me to stay. She, she essentially started walking through everything that had ever happened, and she had a photographic memory. I mean, this is pretty fascinating stuff. Oh, I was fascinated, completely fascinated, and horrified at the same time. Uh, I was more than happy to listen. I'm 50 years old and do not know a female in all my years of any age that would thong the President of the United States, not one. Um, the notion that the President of the United States would dally in any way with this child who, who had a hard time keeping on an even keel on a good day was beyond comprehension, made no sense. Mm -hmm. Over time, Tripp says, she became increasingly concerned about Monica's mental health as she watched her romantic obsession spin out of control. Give me an idea of her fanaticism when it came to calling you. 20, 30 times, and that would be outside of the work hours. She would have 10, 15 calls to Betty Curry a day. The that president's were, secretary. Right, that were increasingly hysterical. And what would she say to Betty Curry 15 times a day? What, what, what? Obscenities that he wasn't responding fast enough to suit Monica, whether it was to get her back to the White House, to help her find a job, to see her, to exchange a gift, for whatever the silly reason was. But it wasn't just Monica she was worried about. It was herself as well. The president, she says, through Monica, was urging her to lie under oath in the Paula Jones sexual harassment case. Tripp got scared, fearing at the very least she'd be fired. Oh, fear. Fear. It was escalating to the point of no return. The, the threats were uh, becoming, uh, not, they were nonstop. But who was threatening, though? Monica was carrying threats from the president. He says, you know, you have to be a team player. You're a political appointee. You must be a team player. All of which led her to a fateful decision that would, of course, transform their lives. Why did you tape Monica Lewinsky? I found myself in the personal crosshairs of the President of the United States. Remember, I was going into an under oath situation, as was he, as was Monica. They were both going to lie. They said, essentially, I'm going to lie, he's going to lie, you are going to be the one convicted for perjury, not us. Did her mother know about this relationship with President Clinton? Yes. How much? Everything. And her, her aunt as well. I was appalled at what was going on, and they encouraged it. The inaugural ball gown that her mom bought for her was one of the saddest points for me. She looked like Snow White. She looked so beautiful in this strapless, red, um, tight-fitting bodice gown with a long, um, hooped skirt. And then Monica stood at the Kennedy Center from the time they opened the doors till well after he left, just waiting. For him? Yeah. It was so sad because she was a beautiful young girl and she should have had a life. Did he pay attention to her when he arrived? No. He didn't? No. You're tearing up. Oh, no. I just, I just think it was pathetic. The whole thing was pathetic. On, on their relationship. Can we stop for a minute? No, I think this is fine because, you know, it's okay, Linda. It, it, well, it was pathetic, but, you know, your critics claim that you egged her on in this. I spent a year telling her this was a very sick situation. She deserved more than this. 
But did she deserve to have her telephone conversations with Tripp taped? A woman she viewed as friend and confidant? Tripp claims today that Monica was never a real friend. And it's been depicted in the media um, as though we were bosom buddies. The first six months you knew Monica, mm -hmm. you were just friends or you were colleagues? No, no, no. She worked for my boss. This was a young, unstable, um, volatile, and potentially dangerous to me, young lady. Why was she dangerous um, to you? Well, she was so completely well connected. There was no way on earth that we were going to offend Monica Lewinsky. I didn't want a young, young girl as a buddy, but something kicked in with Monica. Um, she was so completely needy. You realized that saying you're not Monica's friend is one of the hardest things for the public to buy. Because look, the White House, they're the masters of the universe. They made you believe what they wanted you to believe. But it was more than White House spin. The two women were in constant contact, often spending hours on the phone. You not only taped Monica, you sort of manipulated the conversation mm -hmm. so she would say, repeat right. stories she had told right. you when you weren't taping. Right. Well, how do you defend that? I don't. I had to recreate events that had transpired already in order to document what had happened. You, you don't, don't think you betrayed no, Michael Lewinsky? No, absolutely not. But by exposing her relationship with the president, she would be hurt more? No. You're wrong. Why? You'd have to know Monica. Um, she had already told 14 people about this affair, including the D.C. cab drivers that took her back and forth. Privacy was not an issue. What are those tips? Once Tripp turned over the tapes to Kenneth Starr and the Office of the Independent Counsel, the story of the president's affair erupted. Tripp, forced into a government safe house for protection, was cast as a national villain. I enjoyed talking to you last night about your numerous sexual trysts with President Bill Clinton. Oh, I'm really sorry about that. I really talked your ear off, huh? All those names and dates, mm. blah, blah, blah. It's so boring. Well, actually, I was hoping we could talk about all that stuff again, but slowly and a little bit louder, Ted. <laughs> it was the John Goodman thing. I didn't like him too much. See, that, I laughed at that, and so did Mom, but I, I just Jay like Leno him. just, oof, he, he, he really got me mad. He did because yeah. he went just a, He just went a bit her, too far. Did he pick yeah. on her looks too much? Yes, a little too much. Time. Ryan and Allison Tripp knew about the president's affair long before the public, <laughs> living through the ordeal with their mother. They are speaking out together in support of her for the first time. What, what do you think has been the toughest part of this whole saga for you, Allison? Whew, for me, seeing my mom made out to be an absolutely crazed villain. Like, she is not that way at all. She's the warmest person you'll ever meet, the most uh, dignified person. It takes a strong person to stand by your convictions that much. I mean, I don't honestly believe I could have been able to go through that. I don't think I'm that strong inside, and that's why I will stand by her. Do you remember the day that Monica Lewinsky first called? Nope. <laughs> 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 the 27-year-old former intern is rarely on her mind these days, Tripp says. She still commutes daily to a job at the Department of Defense, where she collects a salary but says she has given little to do. So the punishment was swift and sure, um, uh, but they do pay me, so I'm grateful for that. I haven't made a nickel, a penny, any money at all on, uh, at all on this. Though she owes a million dollars in legal bills, Tripp insists she has no regrets and would do it all again for two reasons, Allison and Ryan. Did they ever say to you, why did you do this? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I said, you knew what was going on. Had I testified falsely under oath, anything I said to you for the rest of my life would have really meant nothing. Monica made her choices. She has had to live with those consequences as I've had to live with mine. Well, I would do it again, certainly. Nancy Collins joins us. Nancy, a lot of people may not realize that Linda Tripp, out of this whole uh, scandal, is the only one who was indicted, and she was indicted for wiretapping uh, Monica Lewinsky, but those charges have been dropped. So are her legal problems all over? No, she's currently suing the Department of Defense and the White House for leaking information from her personnel file to the press in order to discredit her. She is suing the Department of Defense where she still continues to work. She is suing her employer, Barbara, and there's one thing you can say about Linda Tripp is that she is gutsy. 
gutsy she is. Some people might call it chutzpah, but gutsy she is. Thank you for bringing us this Thank interview, you, Nancy. And one more point. 2020 asked Monica Lewinsky and her mother, Marsha Lewis, for a comment. Marsha Lewis says that she never discusses her daughter publicly. And Monica, she says, can't comment because she remains under a gag 